from my home in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And good morning, Philippines, and very early morning in Europe. And we have a guest from Thailand and everywhere, all over the world. And for the first time, we are doing it Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm going to take you over to Marie from, uh, she's hosting from New York. Hi, Marie, twin. Hi, hello. Good evening, everyone. Hi, twin. Hi, Arceli. Good evening, everyone. Hello. My name is Marie Veer. I'm broadcasting from my bedroom here in Forest Hills in Queens. So um, we will have time with you with the, here in Women's World for an hour. We will discuss a very important and exciting event. It's about barter, but we will tell you more about it. I'll turn you over to Arceli, who is in Bohol, in the Philippines. Ah. Hi, good morning from the Philippines. I'm Arcelia Reynaldo, your friend, and we are here on our third episode of our Women's World. So thank you so much for coming. I'm live here at Bohol Island State University, right at my office, the Student Affairs Office of the only state university in, the, in Bohol. Good morning. Nice. Good morning. Yes, let's, let's greet everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. What a beautiful day, morning, and evening we have today. Amazing. We'd like to, we would also like to thank morning. our um, technical boys, Mark and uh, Don Don, for helping us, especially in uh, switching and uh, um, putting us on live on social media, on Facebook. So, Merle, I yes. have here some feedback on uh, and uh, Arceli on our last week's um, uh, episode. We had Judy Aguilar Cinco who spoke to us about how to make our kids interested at school, even if they're at home in this lockdown. And we have wonderful feedback from Shim Day Karel Yuson. Is she from ACLC? Twin, she said that women LCSC. should be strong because they will become mothers of uh, mothers in the future, and the job of a mom is the hardest and the most uh, tiresome thing to do. <laughs> um, raising your family and uh, making the work, the children, um, molding children to be responsible and compassionate is difficult, and so women have to be um, responsible and to have a happy background in order to raise children well. So that's her feedback. Thank you very much, uh, Karel, for that. And we have from Grace Onyas, kids are very special when they learn and grow through environment that they are in. And the responsibility of a mother um, for them to become good persons is enormous. And so um, she thanked our show for providing that um, conversation uh, on how to make kids enjoy school, especially these days. So I remember, Arceli, that uh, our speaker, Judy, was um, telling us that routine and repetition are very important to ensure that uh, the children remember and keep and are able to master because we keep repeating um, the lessons like and also a good thing about Kumon is that the kids are doing learning at their own pace it's unlike the classroom setting when kids are left behind but in Kumon they don't move to the next lesson unless they master the previous one which is logical because you cannot you will uh, not learn the subsequent advanced lessons if you don't understand the previous one so that's a very scientific way of uh, um, putting learning to our children, right? And so yes. um, I'd like to ask Arceli if our speaker is already ready. We yes, can, uh, twin, we can right already, uh, yes. okay, we can, we can discuss further other feedbacks, but I'm going to turn over the, the mic, <laughs> no mic, <laughs> to, for, to, our, to Arceli to introduce to us our speaker, Dalaris. All right, so thank you, Ms. Marvier, and I hope you are very comfortable with your new, new place now. 
You have oh, a yes. <laughs> I am. Thank you. So, with the butterflies at your back. I have now, butterflies. Uh, <laughs> I'm so honored to introduce to you our guest this morning, a very young fellow, a graduate of Ball Island State University. She has been to different countries, a multi awarded young entrepreneur with a big heart for the people. She is so busy doing something in the community and that there is a new thing in Bohol right now, ongoing, and so mm -hmm. many are hooked to it. I think they already have 32,000 followers, am I right? So without much further ado, let me now welcome the chocolate princess herself, Miss Dalarich Polon of Bohol. Hi everyone, good morning, good evening. Um, good morning, America. Good morning. And, um, <laughs> Morning in the Philippines. So, actually, we're out. Uh, I'm a bit late because we slept so late yes, last night. Because mm -hmm. um, that, that's also because of the bartering uh, management that we have. Uh, I would like also to introduce my um, co young entrepreneur with us in, uh, today, uh, Gabriel Diane. She's also a young entrepreneur and very active in the community work in Bohol. Um, say hi, Gal. Hi, yeah. good morning. But, uh, she will be actually Hello, Gabby. Speaking, um, and discussing more about the bartering community. So mm -hmm. I have some PowerPoint, but she also uh, would like to discuss more um, because she has also the visual in the bartering community. I just want to introduce myself. Let me share screen first. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Atidal, why don't we talk a little bit about Porter? Yeah, Fred. go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, so, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Gabrielle Marie Diane Mokiala. I am also a young entrepreneur together with uh, Dala Rich, the Chocolate Princess. So, uh, mm -hmm. let me talk about uh, our Bohol Barter community, which is viral right now. Um, mm -hmm. It is the talk of the town here in Bohol. So, basically, it started with... Uh, we call it Lingao Lingao. It was just uh, for fun uh, mm -hmm. by my group, the Young Entrepreneurs. And then uh, it was one of our friends' idea because he got it from Bacolod Barter Community. So uh, someone from Bacolod introduced it to him. And then mm -hmm. uh, he said, why don't we try it? And he asked help from our group, which is the Young Entrepreneurs of Bohol. And basically, we started with uh, less than 300. Am I right, Atidal? Yes. Yeah. Less than 300. Yeah. Less than 300. And then from then on, it blew into 40,000 members. And mm -hmm. yes. Um, what are uh, the products that you barter or the things that you barter? Well, uh, it's basically from uh, household goods to food to um there's even livestock before but uh, i guess <laughs> uh banned in facebook so we stopped uh bartering livestock and there are also plants because uh ever since the acq here in ball i think everyone got into plants every everyone was interested into uh planting and then growing your own food which mm -hmm. i think i will discuss later so particularly with you, Gabrielle, um, what product did you exchange? Like, did you exchange some accessories or jewelry with the, with the dress or with some food? Uh, How exciting was this for you? Uh, I am into the laundry business. It's a, uh, it's a service mm -hmm. business. When I started okay. this, I bartered my services, which is the laundry. And then uh, from mm -hmm. then on, I gained a lot of friends when I bartered my uh, when I bartered my uh, laundry uh, my services so uh, I also bartered household uh, some of my household stuff which I don't use anymore uh, mm -hmm. there was a coffee maker and then there was a messenger mm -hmm. it's actually very fun because uh, we have this thing we call more than just barter because for us Instead of just bartering stuff, we also gain friendships. So question, like for example, your coffee maker, you took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook? 
Ah, uh, yes. And somebody yeah. saw it and you exchange it with something else? Yeah. Uh, basically, I see. Uh, what, uh, we're gonna, we have this format in Bohol Barter Community. Uh, you okay. put the item description, uh, the item, the item description, if it's new or if it has been used for a long time. And then your location, mm -hmm. uh, so that when you meet up, uh, you know where the person is from. And then uh, that's basically it. And then we get to meet up. Uh, when wherever wherever uh, that person wants to meet up. So is it is not how about the element of the safety? Because there's like um, there's a pandemic going on. So how do you meet and then how do you make sure that those products are clean and uh, you know not contaminated? Uh, yes. Are are those things factored in? Huh? Yes, of course. Uh, it's been discussed mm -hmm. in the group that. Uh, we practice social distancing, and then we have to wear masks because uh -huh. uh, we encourage oh, we encourage people from our group to take a picture. But we have to practice social distancing, and then you have to wear a mask so that you can uh, be a good example to other people who barter. And okay. uh, yes, uh, with regards to uh, disinfection, we also encourage people to clean their products or their items first before bartering it with other people. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we restrict uh, makeups, wow. like use makeups. So um, we're not allowing the people to um, um, barter their use makeup. So we have rules and regulations. <laughs> I'm just going to share this. Because last, yesterday, we're, a bit, we're really a bit stressed because um, okay. book ban our group like 41,000 uh, yeah. members in the group so we mm -hmm. need to do it again so from scratch oh. from zero yeah it's that actually an inspiring yeah. story right that it yes. does <laughs> yeah oh so, my gosh but some people like why why a lot of people asked what happened what happened but actually we didn't know because um, Facebook didn't um, warn us that they will ban us like 10.08 oh. in the morning yesterday so until last night until 1 a.m for inviting friends to join again uh -huh. but imagine we build that 41,000 members from uh may 15 until june 2 that was yesterday mm -hmm. and then we need to do it again now we're i think god we're um 11,000 yeah, 12,000 yeah. so we're able to get it 12 in 12 hours 10,000 people and a imagine. lot of people are supporting even our bishop already joined posted it into uh, her piece shoes um to, to barter for two sacks of rice for less fortunate people oh, in nice. the province yeah and i think gab has a lot of um sharing also about how inspiring um the community is because when we started it we didn't really expect we didn't expect that people will really um um, be touch on what we do because it's just for fun when we start because the young entrepreneur usually like we don't want to get bored <laughs> so we just want yes, to do yes. something every day like oh what we can do with the community so JP, John, Paul, Liam started that and then yeah Gab and everyone I think we're seven Gab eight, eight young um, the second generation entrepreneur in Bohol so, How many months has this been going on, Dalit? Uh, it started in May uh, 15. It was just uh, what, during the lockdown, weeks, right? At the oh, down. yeah, May 15. Wow. It was like 15 days, and we built 41,000 members, but it was back to zero <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> From 40,000, we got banned by. Give us another background again. Why were you being uh, shut down by? Facebook. Facebook. Why was yeah. that? I think um, because when we start um, uh, doing it, we didn't have rules or regulation yeah. at first. So I th um, Facebook uh -huh. has a lot of commerce regulation, rules and regulation. So they're not allowing alcohol, right. masks, um, about, uh, most especially about oh. COVID um, um, things. And um, live animals, like even um, <laughs> chickens, uh, pets, dogs. But uh, on the first week, we didn't uh, restrict that. So on the second week, mm -hmm. we're able to have a lot of rules and regulation. And then we made a lot of posters about the regulations. But it was not that easy because every day, 
we have a lot of problems, Gabra. Yeah. We, we encounter yeah, like, a lot of problems. Of us, right? At Idal, yeah. we handle the 40,000 uh, members. And it was so tiring because we also have day jobs. <laughs> and then yeah. also handle the big community. Right. So, yeah. But question, so what? who... There was such thing as an exchange of, like, for example, chicken in yes. exchange for what? In um, exchange my, for a t-shirt? My brother, or, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, my brother has a chicken, the back of our house. Mm-hmm. So, okay. he bartered uh, one pack of tempura. So, oh. when he posted <laughs> it, <laughs> I was like, I just want uh, one pack. And then as a format, <laughs> and I, wa- I want a one pack of tempura. And then, like, a few seconds, like, mine... Me, I'll go there in our chocolate oh house. My God. They exchanged. I was like, wow, that was so fast. Like a lot of people also wanted to um, still want the uh, chicken. But it's like, no, no more. <laughs> but we the, didn't the, know. The hen? Is it a hen or? or it's really it? the rooster. <laughs> or the <Yeah>. pangkari? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. That's <laughs> interesting. It's already bawal right now at the end. Yeah. yeah, and then <laughs> already restricted that exactly. So, no more roosters, no more chickens. Like and that. one thing also is, um, Facebook <laughs> didn't allow um, liquor. So, I posted Fundador because I got, I have Fundador mm-hmm. at the house, but we didn't really drink alcoholic drink. So, mm-hmm. I posted it in Facebook. So, it's like, guys, I have Fundador, and then I put description on it, and then I just, uh, okay, offer me whatever. So it's like, I mm-hmm. got a big, um, I know, uh, four kilos of ripe mangoes. And then there's one wow. guy there that, oh, um, uh, how many kilos do you want? There's a big tree of mango tree at the back of our house. And he took uh-huh. a picture of the mango tree. So, oh my gosh. And then I was like, okay, but I need to choose. So I, I just choose the four kilos of ripe mangoes. It was fun. Then they went here. But only in a gate, you know, not allowing everyone to get inside. Yeah. Right. So, but uh, this is very interesting, and especially because it's being started by you, young people. But it has a limitation, like, it has to be just within a zone. Like, I would like to barter from you your chocolate with, for example, what I have here, a, yes. a bag. Yeah, but it, we're so far, so that's our limitation. That's the limitation of the barter system. But in terms of impact, can you already say, either you or Gabriel, that what kind of impact have you created and, or lessons learned that you have uh, um, reflected on from this yes. kind of uh, vibrant exchange? Yeah. Uh, yes, I would like Go to answer ahead. your question. Yes. Uh, okay. We had a mother who posted uh, drawings of her uh, child with cerebral palsy. Uh, she just posted like paintings of that girl her name was Demi and then mm. she just asked in return for a Big Mac and then what oh. happened is wow. yes it was it, uh, that's actually one of our inspiring barter stories because she mm. just asked for one Big Mac in exchange uh, for the drawings of her daughter with cerebral palsy and then uh, what happened next is a lot of people wanted to get those drawings and uh, mm-hmm. And because it was already bartered, uh, what people did is that they just sent her stuff. Uh, even though she didn't mm-hmm. uh, ask for it, people sent her ice cream and other kinds of stuff oh. like food. Uh, and this particular, one of our members, uh, she's Carla, she connected, uh, she's, she has a friend who owns uh, McDonald's here in Bohol. Mm-hmm. And then she connected uh, Demi's mother with uh, Mrs. Evelyn Du of uh, McDonald's Ray Clarine and then what Mrs. Du did is that she sent uh, more than just Big Mac and then she also sent her uh, toys and merch from McDo and also toiletries so the Miss mother was very happy because she just asked for a Big Mac but she received a lot more she got than more that. Yes. how very nice that's community power right Yes. That's a good way. That's a very good impact. Yes. Thank you, Gab. Yeah. How about Dalaric? And I want to share another thing. Like, um, a lot mm. of people telling stories that they met their cousin that they didn't know when they had a barter. 
when they meet each other, they didn't expect that, oh, you're my long-lost cousin or long-lost best friend. And they, mm-hmm. they met in a barter community. And we're so, um, yeah, last night okay. until um, for one week, we collect stories because we had a mm-hmm. contest also. We're having contests in the barter community just to collect stories and also to give, also, because we're all young entrepreneurs, we have different businesses. We want also uh-huh. to give away our uh, products at the same time to, to, to those people. And then it's another story, as another story that uh, I think she is three years old or five years old. Um, um, mm-hmm. Young girl, um, her mom posted uh, different things on Facebook. And then um, it's, it's the daughter's birthday. And then when she posted it, everything that uh, the celebration of her daughter is actually mm-hmm. from Barter. <laughs> so the cake, the oh. lechon, uh, the coke, Amazing, the, right? and all, all, the, all the food that they celebrated, that, that they put it in their table uh, for the celebration of the, um, the child is really from the Barter. But it's really heartwarming for us because even like the young people, we have work, daily work. We have also other mm-hmm. community work. We have other volunteer work. But this barter community mm-hmm. is also another part of us that um, mm-hmm. uh, when, when we started it, as what I've said, like, we didn't expect that it would be so complicated in the later uh, stage. And then, but it's very fulfilling for us and also mm-hmm. for, for the young people, for, especially like the next generation, I think we, they can see that you can really do something in the community without even um, putting up uh, investment or money. Right. Because um, right. technology right now is really like there, but you just need to start it. And when you start it, I think people will just support. But one thing I want to share also, I like, really expect a yes. lot of um, negative people also. <laughs> we experience uh-huh. that every day. People like what, uh, what happened with, with the, how did they deal with, the, with you, this negative uh, people? Yeah, we just, we didn't um, reply them, (laughs) but we just Mm -hmm. need to continue because there's only one goal in the group. Like we just need to inspire people and then answer the needs of the people in the barter community because even with those negative things, you know, even you do good things or whatever, I think there's really people who are very negative in it. But we always tell the group when we uh, do a group chat that we still go back to the goal why we are doing this. So what is our purpose mm-hmm. in doing this? Even with those negative things happen <laughs> and, and going to happen. And we expect that, mm-hmm. that later on, even like um, with the news, because there's a lot of news already that we're doing this and that, but some people are like, you know, um, they have the different mindset, but we expect that. Right. But for as long as you have um, attained your purpose, your goal, that's the most important thing, regardless of the feedback, of the negative yes. feedback, right? And yeah. am I correct when uh, I say that you don't need money to be able to survive? You just exchange goods. I mean, yes. this happened before. Ever, before the Spanish people came, there was this barter trade between China and all the other, and all of us natives, our native ancestors who exchanged, for example, my grandpa would say, sundang or, you know, this bolo in exchange for a small piece of land when they, they needed it. They need, yeah. he needs some bowl or he would give a little piece of his land. So it worked before it could work now. Yeah. So as I'm, far as people in who have experienced, for example, maybe uh, the people who had less money, but you know, have, have fruits and vegetables. There are, there is this, this informal exchange, like, Oh, I'll give you a bag of, a basket of to my tomatoes and I, you give me uh, uh, a cake, a piece of a uh, whole cake that I made. So there is also that kind of exchange among friends. So is that, re- is that really vibrant and going on in Bohol, Dalarich? Yes. Um, actually, my mom, even like yeah. our parents, Gab, right? Very supportive. All the parents mm-hmm. of Daya entrepreneurs are very supportive because they said that in our in our time, my mom said, in our time we're doing that. I also remember very fresh in my um, uh, mind that my when my lola um, they sell we sell uh, bolinao the the fresh fish, mm-hmm. the small fish. Yeah. I don't know what's the English for that. Fish. Yeah. Yes. So uh, when bolinao. we sell that, mm-hmm. we go to we walk to different um, barangays 
and then some people will just offer us um, like one bullig of banana. <laughs> so uh -huh. I really remember that. But when when I so uh, when I see that again in a barter community that they have like one bullig of saging and then one um jalibi uh one uh, <laughs> bucket of jalibi i was like wow but that, that i hope you had pictures yeah we have pictures i think i i know i'm not sure if gab uh, collected it and imagine um miss um and uh, like they have the big bullig of saging from duero so he went to tagbilaran just to get the one bucket of jalibi but and oh they took it together like Wow. That is so interesting. <laughs> yes. Ms. Dow, Ms. Dow, can I ask a question? Sure. Can you, hear me? Like, yes. you know, I got disconnected a little bit uh, a while ago, but, um, you know, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. It's so fascinating because, you know, yeah. it's like ancient way of um, survival mode, you know, ancient meets uh, yeah. technology, modern technology. Yeah. So um, I want to know if uh, um, in the future or in the very near future, what would be the impact when you have like thousands upon thousands of young people or it doesn't have to be, you know, young across age demographic when people, how does that affect the economy when people don't really care how much the value of their particular product from manufacturer's point of view and retailer's point of view it's just that satisfying one's cravings or what one wants so how do we reconcile that uh you know considering that this is looking like a movement and yeah. so when it when we go back to ancient you know what what do you think yeah okay i think very important for us especially this pandemic time that we go back to basic and as I would say myself, I was still young, but I didn't realize that um, as a young person, I want to travel, I want to uh, buy a lot of things. But when this pandemic happened, I realized that those things are not that important. important. But yeah. um, what most important is food and to be able to survive on daily, um, every mm -hmm. day. And even like our employees also, that we're able to give them job. Because if not, they're also like, there will be, uh, we have families also too. And then in the economy side, I think this way of doing these things is really to help the, to more help people sustainably. Because if you give a lot of, uh, in the government, they're just giving goods like one sack of rice, but it's not sustainable, right? right. So what would be um, more um, meaningful and like, to make it more sustainable, you should teach the people on how to um, survive. Like, so for example, that's why also we started another initiative before the partner, um, the Grow My Own Food. So we mm -hmm. teach the people how to grow their own food because in my experience, when my mom told me that let's plant up the back of our house, so I was so amazed because I just remember when I was in grade three that we planted pet chai at the school. But when mm -hmm. we do that again for really at the back of the house and every day we see the plants growing, I was so amazed. But I was thinking what I can do, like this is food for my family, but also we give pet chai to our neighbor and then we also teach them how to do organic um, planting. That's why I told Gov, our governor, that Gov, mm -hmm. can we launch a program that can teach people also and give them seedlings and whatever they um, we can give to them plus a bonus that they have a cash price to get after mm -hmm. 50 days. So it depends on the, how they create, the, how, how, how they put their plants and then recycle the plastic in, in whatever you have and put the seedlings on it. And it's actually in go, ongoing now. And then the uh, feedback of the people were, well, wow, there's a lot of people planting nowadays. Nice. And then they also have like every, every week because the contest, we need, you, you need to post a picture of your um, plants every day in Facebook mm -hmm. and hashtag that. And that's the, um, the basis of the judges to see it. And every 15 days to 30, 15, 50th day, 30th, 
30th day, the Department of Agriculture with the API will go to their house and check their plants. And then on the 50th day, they will receive, we will choose five winners for um, that and we give them cash price and an another inputs. And with the bartering community, it's actually all connected. connected I didn't realize yes. that Gov, like, you know, when I started the Grow My Own Food before the bartering community, and I feel like, wow, Lord is really like amazing to connect all these things because when I see that people also um, bartering plants, like the seedlings. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah, when I have this seedlings, I want another seedling. So yeah. people are exchanging. So, and then some people, oh, I want that seedling as well. So it's really more connected on what we also started with the Grow My Own Food with the bartering community. I think this is also the way that the province, since we cannot, tourism industry in Bohol is really down. And I think um, Gov also told us that it will be back in two to three years. But, you know, the ma major drive, kind of economic drive in Bohol is really the tourism. So a lot of displaced workers. So what we can do. So... I think with the uh, small businesses working together, supporting each other, um, I think we can survive this together as one. Okay. Yes. <laughs> amazing. That Very is good. amazing. That yes, really it's inspiring. Inspiring. Yeah. Yes, it's inspiring. Yes, you're just starting add... what's supposed to be done. Yes. Yeah. I think, Gov, you want to add something, Gov? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is good about us Bolanos is that we are proven to be <laughs> with yeah. uh, what happened a few years ago uh, with the earthquake. Yeah. Uh, it took us a long time to, uh, we call it Bangon Bohol. Uh, it mm -hmm. took us a long time to stand on our own feet, but we, uh, even us in the province, we help each other, we help uh, those who are in need. And uh, they, we learn from that with what happened right now. So uh, not just uh, we all know that a lot of people lost their jobs. So what, what other people did is that they extended uh, their help to those mm -hmm. who are in need. So it's not just the government who's helping uh, the needy or the poor. Also, the private, se private sector here is extending uh, their help. And then basically all of us are helping each other. And through this barter community, um, it mm -hmm. has grown into a bigger perspective and then uh, uh, it actually taught us Boholanots that uh, not just the rich can help the poor, it also the poor people can help their... Can help themselves. Yeah, can yeah. help themselves. With, uh, Amazing. Yes. With what Atidal said, oh. yes, uh, uh, with, this, with the food and the root crops, a lot of people have uh, mangoes and uh, other plants in their house uh, but uh, what other people did is that for example they have a lot of squash in their house they barter it with others who have mangoes and then at least you can Follow have a little bit of everything <laughs> that's really right. nice oh my god Very twin exciting. twin i oh, will barter yes. a dozen <laughs> of mangoes for your with Louis Vuitton my bag, bag with Kate Spade. Actually, do you know what's happened here? You young people, you <laughs> rock. You're but, amazing. You know, uh, Dalarich and Gab, you really deserve the, the uh, recognition. Thank you for uh, leading the way because, you know, it's like yes. um, we are, you are living our dreams. And what you are doing, Imagine. what you have done right now is you are elevating the social uh, moral consciousness and environmental consciousness of the mm -hmm. young people. And, you know, um, I, in the future, I'd love to work with you, especially in terms of um, um, the young people in, in, the, uh, in the villages. What we have uh, during the last, the past 50 years or so, uh, most of the activities for the young people is only like the, the basketball games, you know, and mm -hmm. so the, the, the uh, problems of drug addiction and all that because kids were bored. And, you know, even the university kids and the out of school youth kids with this project, there's a way for them to get involved. And um, that's why it's brilliant. It's um, 
and it's it's amazing. So I, I would it's like great. to open the the um, floor to anyone who wants to ask question. Um, then so you know, I'm thinking if we can replicate this in a community in Italy, right, Flora? A community in Vienna, in Austria, a community in Korea. Twin, we can do that here, the two of us, New York <laughs> and New Jersey. Yes. So it's, it's you know, <laughs> the, the equalization the, um, of wealth, you know, sharing. This is like interdependent, no prosperity, universal values. Yes. This is the realization of, of you know, a leveling up our social consciousness. This is exciting. And, and you young women are starting it. That's a pride. Right. Yeah. Um, so to, maybe some have questions. This, yeah. Maybe Arceli has a question too. We have yeah, from the chat. Have some problems here regarding my, you know, connectivity. But however, I would like to congratulate Dollar Rich and Gav and the rest of the team. Yes. You are I'll so have to amazing. My hands. Guys. I'm so inspired. You know, I have come to a point in my life as a teacher, as a mother. I, I actually had a uh, worry about the future, like considering all the things that are happening around, considering the influences our young fellows are being exposed to. So I have some sort of worry for the young fellows, the, uh, the younger generations. But with you um, being so bold in your activities now, you are really trying to mobilize your energy using your mm -hmm. youthful um, approaches and you are really making a difference and an impact in the community you are not right. just connecting the old to yours but you're also connecting the young ones to yours uh, please know that there are young fellows who are also so excited of what you are doing in facebook so you see are you aware yeah. of that <laughs> there was this young there was this young um girl who was telling her mom, Mom, you are again selling, you are again bartering. Did you inform our dad about it? <laughs> There's <laughs> actually a lot of kids are also like worried. <laughs> <laughs> but they are meaning, they are involved. They are involved. They are so conscious of what's going around. And with your influence, guys, I'm very positive. Bohol and the rest of the world for, could soar higher, higher and higher. Right. So, Amazing. I'm, it is actually giving me a sense of peace now. I know lots of students are watching you. If you are doing something, they can also do something more. And you see, if the rest of the world will be able to do mm -hmm. that, it, it will be a better world for all of us. No pandemic can stop us. COVID mm -hmm. is a COVID. We will awesome, right? On. And I know the rest of us here listening to us will agree to me. And I think we really have a very fruitful morning today. <laughs> great, great. Yes. Can, can I go ahead and read the chat here? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Twin. Uh, hello, everyone. It is past 3 a.m. here from Austria from Ferdinand Blaschke, Merle Blaschke. And what I am hearing from you folks um, is very interesting. And then another one from Peter Kaga Barter system comes from Asia, I think. It's very helpful this time of pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Dr. Agulan, I want, um, I have three Olympic pins. I want to trade it. <laughs> I want to trade <laughs> it and a, a collection of Olympic pins. And um, he wants to make money. Okay. The solution, and from uh, Blaschke again, solution to problems, especially in times of lockdown and when there is a scarcity of resources. Barter it is. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. and amazing, uh, Teresita Humawan. Yes, we need really, uh, to g need to go to basics, a uh, way of life to have a sustainable, wait, hold on a second. I lost it. To have a sus we need sustainable living, amazing topic, bartering. That's what I'm doing now. And, um, and um, Ferdinand Blaschke, can we barter a piece of land for a house too? Well, <laughs> okay, very good project uh, from Flora from Italy. 
which involves young generation. We need more and more and more. And from Esther from, from Austria, very impressive. It would be great if other young generation from other provinces will do the same. Um, right. Yes. And, and uh, from uh, Tita Gigi Peñalosa from Suroptimist International. She is the newly uh, governor-elect of uh, Suroptimist International. She said, in this modern age of online shopping and all, bartering brings us back in time on how to trade, re how the trade really started. Something the young generation should know and learn. And fr from Paris Moon from Hong Kong, good to join from Hong Kong. Great, thank you everyone. So let's open Amazing. the floor for everyone's um, questions. And you know, you ask uh, uh, Dollar Rich and Miss Gab. Right. Somebody can ask a question? Who would it be? We have uh, from Canada, we have from Thailand, that's amazing. We have a full house tonight. So, but now let me raise the question to Dalarich uh, Twin. And then, mm -hmm. uh, Dalarich, how is your um, chocolate house going on right now, the business? Um, yeah. is, it, is it on a slowdown or is, are you having a frenzy in your production because it has been enhanced by the barter? How is it? Hmm. I told you, Emal, like all you're spending time a lot, a lot of time in bartering. <laughs> anyway, um, uh -huh. we're just, I, I feel like so blessed because we're on the food business and we're supplying actually supermarkets. So when we experienced the enhanced community quarantine um, last April, um, mm -hmm. We actually didn't lay off people because we're, our production are still ongoing. But there's at the first stage of the ECQ, of course, there's fear. Like mm -hmm. we don't want like to be um, like maybe some people have virus. So, but I, I told my my mom that we get, we keep going still because we're still um, supplying, um, especially the tablea to the supermarket, but not with the chocolate because our uh, market with the chocolate is actually. And the hotels and the chefs so we're not able to send it outside Bohol but that's also the thing that I think Bohol economy can really survive because as, as what I can see people are really um, supporting local products because when okay. even you support local products it also help another Boholana right so mm -hmm. um, for now we have um, still ongoing we didn't stop doing chocolates Every day we make chocolates and we supply only Bohol for now because we cannot send it outside, especially with the supermarket outside Bohol, like with the big supermarket in Cebu and Manila mm -hmm. because it's restricted. Mm -hmm. And also I'm very careful with, with the chocolates because it will melt. Mm, yeah. <laughs> There's no people who will handle that outside because what we do before is actually sending people to deliver it to um, big supermarket in Cebu and Manila. But for now, it's we have um, the problem on the logistics, so this is really a big problem when during this time. And uh -huh. and I would also like to say that um, supporting local is very important during this this moment in the world. And I think mm -hmm. also what we do with the young people, the young entrepreneurs group, also is whatever product that you have, we post it in Facebook and whatever services. Right. We share it with our network. So, so, for example, I'm selling this cookies, chocolate cookies. So people are, uh, especially the young, <laughs> that you're okay, mm -hmm. share this, share this. So we share each other. And I think that's also the way that we also want to, um, to tell to the young people that when you see a product there, which is local, locally made, I think the best thing that you can do, even not, not buying it, is actually sharing it in social media. Yeah, Ms. Gal, Ms. Gal, can I ask a question? another question? Sure. You, you are called the chocolate princess of Bohol. Could you tell us uh, your story, how you started um, this uh, beautiful name, chocolate princess? Yeah, actually, I want to share a screen. I have this. Yeah, okay. Let me do this. <laughs> it's actually mm -hmm. working now. Um, all right. 
Uh, play. Actually, my mom started with a tablet. I just want to share this story to inspire everyone. So mm -hmm. that's why women is very close to my heart because my mom is the second generation. My Lola started the tablet. We sell that in the neighborhood only. So when uh, my, my Lola died, my mom's um, uh, making the tablet from my Lola. And then yeah, this is the picture of the chocolate that we have. So she started with the three kilos of cacao. It's just very in a plastic and a cartolina and uh, mm -hmm. stampad, rubber stamp because there's no computer before. So she started that as a livelihood. So I'm very inspired by my mom, by my parents, my dad, which is my mama is actually a street sweeper before. Um, while streeting, uh, sweeping in the street at 3 a.m. to 8 a.m., she will go back to um, to the house and make tablea and go back to her work at 1 to 5 p.m. And in the evening, she will um, mold the, the tablea and sell it to um, the neighborhood, the Sari Sari store. That, that's how she started. But as, as you can see, my parents, they're really working hard for us to be able to go to us college. We're five. So I can see that what, what we can do, I mean, after graduation, I want to help them. I think that's very normal for Filipina that we want to help our parents also. So one day I said, I want to go to Europe to study about chocolate. I went to Europe mm -hmm. in 2014. I, I'm a scholar in Ghent University to make really chocolate because that's really my dream that to innovate the tablea that we have into real chocolate that you can see that in Europe in the U.S. Because I was asking why the Philippines are only making tablea and, and I think a lot of people like um, looking down on that product, right? So a lot of people, oh, mm -hmm. tablea is not a chocolate, but if you think that's the 100% dark chocolate, and that's supposed to be the most expensive chocolate that you can buy. So that's my dream that I want to learn more. So I went to Belgium. So I innovate the tablea that we have. I make a uh, very nice packaging. And then Ginto is another brand for dark chocolate, 75% dark chocolate, using the cacao beans in the whole province of Bohol. Because Bohol has a lot of cacao, cacao but at the back of the backyard only. So we want to rehabilitate all the old cacao and then buy that cacao from those small farmers in the province in the island and make chocolates out of it so you can eat directly the 75 percent dark and then the table and the pralines i think you guys know the pralines in mm -hmm. europe there's a lot of pralines like field chocolates so there's uh, manzanitas inside passion fruit inside so it's ganache so that's that's the innovation of the table that we have and then, yeah, this, that's a picture of the chocolate. So this is the product. So, and also we use um, indigenous material like the weave, the weave. I think you know raffia and, uh, um, and the antikera basket. I think it's, it's actually export already. So we use that um, for the packaging of the product. And then the chocolate house. <laughs> when we started the, um, the tablea business, it's only really at our house in our mm -hmm. uh, own house but the dream is really to make the bigger bigger factory and i think people really label me um boss chocolate princess when i won a contest in the u.s embassy in 2013 so i didn't give that title to me but some people like the chocolate princess of ball blah 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 i think that's because of the media as well and i was like some people said that doll you should take that that title because it's for you so some people are like, oh, the, you're the chocolate princess. I was like, I'm not really. <laughs> so, but <laughs> the dream, and, and I think that's because from the scratch, we really work so hard for what we are now. And then I have also a project in here in Ireland to adopt cacao tree because as you, as you can observe in the Philippines, the mm -hmm. Spanish brought the, bee, the cacao and planted in the whole um, country, but some people take for granted the old trees that they have. So that's why I ask people to rehabilitate their 75-year-old cacao tree. And then I ask people to de donate 75 pesos to adopt a one tree. And the farmer will rehabilitate it. And then after uh, one year, their uh, donation, you can receive a chocolate already from the farmer who will rehabilitate it. So that's the project that we started in 2018. So as of now, we have 1, 1, uh, 125,000 PHP for the 
three rehabilitated old cacauti. So 100 families were able to help the 100 families. And then I want to say, because you guys are in the U.S., Mommy Cecilia is actually a 71-year-old woman who is retired mm -hmm. and also a U.S. citizen now in Bohol. She's helping mm -hmm. me on the rehabilitation project. She actually mm -hmm. really speaks English well. <laughs> but she, she, um, very, um, the passion inside of Mommy Cecilia, I call her Mommy, is really, mm -hmm. um, I'm very inspired as a young person of how mm -hmm. she is doing these things. And then she always teach us, like, you know, you're the future generation. You need to really plant trees, um, take care of the environment for the mother. I'm very inspired. So Mom Cecilia is my team leader for one community. Amazing. Yeah, and then, yeah. Some people also, some foreigners, um, during, before, before pandemic, they will visit the community. So mm -hmm. they will eat cacao trees over there. So we're also supporting them. We're also supporting um, small um, businesses in, in Calape. Actually, this is specifically in Calape. So this is what we call the Criollo. That's the old variety that the Philippines has. And a lot of people in the world, because this is the whole world, that we have the gold bean in the Philippines. You can wow. see that difference. Uh, when you see the white bean, when you cut it, it's yes. the Criollo. It was the the variety that was brought by the Spaniards here in the Philippines and everyone in the world is looking for that and we have that in Bohol and then we're so blessed wow. to have that and then yeah this is the output of the rehabilitation project that we are doing in one community here in Bohol yeah we got award I got award in Japan because of that project so, yeah, and, and the amazing thing is for the first time the Philippines got a gold award last year in London and that was wow. the chocolate that we mm. actually use that's the because for how many years um, Philippines is joining the Academy of Chocolate Awards but we didn't get the gold but for the first time we got the gold but it's actually from us, from Bohol. But it's the amazing thing is my mom actually said um, before when we submitted the chocolate that um, she's actually didn't believe that um, we can get the gold. But I told her, Mama, I think the mission that we put in our company is to really put Philippines, especially Bohol, the island of the chocolate hills in the world's chocolate map. So I'm very <laughs> positive that we can... <laughs> Gold, but Amazing. I was actually just very positive. But when we get the result, I can't believe it. Like, Lord, you're so amazing. I just claim it that I we, we get the gold award. But I would just tell you, this gold award is actually the not the 75%. This is actually the unsweetened chocolate, which is the tablea that people are underestimating. But imagine mm -hmm. that that you know our Lola or Nana making the tablea, but that's gold awardee in the world in london and this is the, the tablea time, yes that's the tablea. Rich, this is the tablea that we make into a chocolate and a drink right in the exactly mornings the sequate. i yes. enjoy uh, in my grandmother's yes. house too exactly so that's the that's the gold awardee the, the tablea mm -hmm. not the chocolate that i innovated that's really the the, 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 the tablea so for the first time my mom and my parents fly to London. It's my first, it's their first time to go abroad <laughs> and fly and ride an airplane mm -hmm. because for that award. So we, we went to London for that. And then, yeah, we got another third international um, award in APEC last year and also because of what we're doing. And I think people um, just think that how did you do all of these things? For me, I think it's just being very, very positive, hard work, and really prayers. Prayers is very important because if you're still, if you're, if you're doing these things, you need really guidance from from our Lord that we can do this together. Especially during this time, this difficult time in the world, you really need prayers. Also, you need to do something. That's also the thing that we really want to do a lot of things in the community because when we started from scratch. A lot of people really helping us. And a lot you of people, have been. my mom. When my mom, uh -huh. I want to share this story because we have, we have, we don't have rice. When we were, I think when we were in high school. So my mom is sweeping in the street and there's one American guy who give her money. 
and she he, she didn't know him. She just gave that money to her, but that guy didn't know that that money is very important for her to be able to buy food for the family. And those people, those strangers, those people are supporting um, right now are actually, um, we're so amazed because these people are following our journey. And those strangers that give money to my mom before that we didn't know, I really want to say thank you because we didn't know them, but um, I don't know how they were able to know that my mom really want um, need that money uh, for for that day <laughs> for to be Amazing. able to survive. Yeah, that's what we can say, uh, Dalla Rich. That like kindness goes a long, long way, and yeah, God it, works in mysterious ways. Yeah, indeed. It really so it's it. been a wonderful, very wonderful time sharing with you. And we can spend, again, a whole night uh, talking about wonderful <laughs> yes. things that you're doing. But we have to wrap up. And so yes. we'd like to thank you so much, Dalrich, for a wonderful, golden experience and inspiring from a young leader like you. Thank you so much. And thank also you. thank you to Gabrielle Marie. So on behalf of my uh, colleagues in Women's World, my uh, twin, Merle and Arceli, this is Marivir. I'd like to say uh, see you again next uh, Sunday for another episode of Women's World. So take it away, uh, Arceli and uh, my twin. Yeah, we are running out of time. Thank you uh, so much, Dalarich and Gab. And this is just my take. It's really true that no single person, like no two poor who cannot give, and that there is no such rich who is not in need. So therefore, we really need each other to have this work as we as long as we live. Thank you so much, and see you in our next episode. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Hey, thank Twin, you, take Dallas. it away. Yeah. Thank you, Della Rich and Gab. You guys are breath of fresh air. In this dark world, you know, uh, what we are going through, the whole world, this is very in difficult situation, but you give hope. And that's what we want to see in our young people. And we have women leaders from all over the world here. And it really makes us feel like all our efforts and we should not lose hope. And um, before we close, I'd like to close with a um, food for the heart. And this is from our mother of peace, Mother Moon. Um, this is just a, a paragraph. Um, it's about peace. She said that everyone desires peace. But peace does not come easily. If it were as a commonplace as stones on the side of a country road or trees in a mountainside, we would never have experienced the terrible wars and conflicts that plague the human world. But bringing peace demands that everyone invest sweat, tears, and sometimes blood. That is why, even though we long for peace, we seldom achieve it. To experience true peace, we must first practice true love without expecting reward exactly. and from my heart to yours from the women's world to the whole world to your heart and your household we wish you a loving and peaceful happy productive and peaceful world good Wave evening everyone. good morning everyone bye bye thank you so thank much you for joining thank us. you to don don Wow, thank, and, you. Uh, Mark. thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Thank you, Thailand. Thank you, IPLC. The whole class, the whole school is with us. Amazing. Thank you, John Paul Lim of the Barker Group. Yes, yes. Also, yes. thanks to Anne Beck and Sylvia. South Carolina. Right. <laughs> Take care. Take care, darling. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.